Good morning, my darlings. Can you see me? I'm very far away from the camera. It is Thursday morning and I have just had the loveliest morning ever. A very, very um, luxurious, lady of leisure kind of morning. So I'll fill you in <laughs> on what's happened so far. Had a 6.45 a.m. personal training session with Simon. He came to the house and we did an hour of weights. Then I had already booked myself into my first ever class at the new club, the Bamford Club, um, and I didn't want to miss it, so that class was at 9am. It was called the MBC class, Metabolic Conditioning, conditioning or Metabolic Body Conditioning, and I thought, oh, it'll be fine, it'll just be like an easy class and it'll be okay to do the two in a row. Oh my goodness. It was killer. It was a really, really tough class. It was a mix of floor exercises, uh, body weight, weighted stuff, rowing machine. So yeah, it was intense and there were eight ladies in the class. It was a really, a very strong group. So that was fantastic. Um, and then I decided because I'm here at the club, I would go for a swim. I did 10 lengths, which isn't very many, of their really long pool. And that was lovely and then they have got a cold water immersion right next to the sauna which is a Wim Hof <laughs> dream come true so I did cold plunge sauna cold plunge sauna cold plunge and it was blooming freezing way colder than the lake that was yesterday morning that I did the lake at Heckfield it was way colder I think it must be only like two degrees I only dunked myself in then got straight out again and even my thighs felt numb and there's a lot of muscle on your thighs so for them to go numb yeah that was that was a lot <laughs> very chilly but great for the body to do the hot cold hot cold or cold hot cold hot cold um and then so the whole reason why i wanted to come this morning mainly was because do you guys remember a little while ago i said that i had gone for a facial with teresa tame she is one of the best facialists in the world i would say and she is now here at Dalesford, which is amazing. So she very kindly invited me in for a treatment with her new machine, which is called the M Face, E M Face. And imagine how it feels to have a microcurrent facial, but times 100. So I was connected with this grounding pad on my back. That's how strong it is. You need a grounding pad. Two pads on either side of my face, and then one here. And it's super intense microcurrents, like activating the muscles in your face you have four of these treatments one a week for a month so i am hoping that in a month's time i will be a sculpted golden goddess i did take some before and after photos not sure how flattering they are so may or may not share them um but it was a quick 30 minute treatment she gave me a light peel as well which was great um and then just by chance my mum <laughs> happened to be coming for a swim and she has been interested in learning what she can do for uh, skin texture improvement ahead of our wedding. So she came in and had a little chat with Teresa as well. And long story short, she's now signed up to a four, four session course of, um, I actually don't know the name of it. I'm gonna have to find out what the name of Lola's course is, but it's going to improve discoloration on her skin, a little, um, what do you call it? veins when the veins are bursting um, and also a little bit of improvement with wrinkles as well so yes Lila's gonna have that treatment at four o'clock this afternoon um, and yeah so what a great start to the day really lovely I now have that feeling where I'm like oh my gosh you've spent an entire morning just pampering and I really need to get some work done so I'm just waiting for Charlie to text me back to see if we need any food bringing home from Dalesford um, I'm just gonna have a very quick run into the shop really hope I don't bump into anyone because I do look a little bit scary perfectly defined but a little bit scary so I'm gonna dash in grab some bits and then ho head home and um, I want to make some rhubarb compote that is my baking or cooking mission for the afternoon so yeah that's the plan for the day
Hello again my darlings, it's a few hours later now. Yes, I look totally ridiculous because I've just had a shower and um, thought I would put my hair up in heatless curls but upon reflection I'm not too sure why I've done this because we're not going anywhere later. It'll take at least three hours for these to dry and then I'm going to bed but never mind, at least my hair is up away from my face and I'm not having to use a load of heat on it. I am going makeup free for the rest of the day to enjoy the goodness of my facial earlier. So it is Thursday but it feels like Friday because we've got the four day weekend ahead of us. I'm filming this just before the Easter weekend. It's Good Friday tomorrow. So I'm going to wrap up my emails and my work for ahead of the weekend. We are going to be doing quite a lot of wedmin, <laughs> wedding admin this weekend. Um, so yeah, I just want to clear the inbox. But uh, then I want to continue my theme of pampering today and I'm going to do a little at home gel manicure using my green flash range from Manicurist. I have got all of my favourite bits in this little bag here. First of all, I need to remove the nail polish that's on my nails now. Uh, Manicurist is really beautiful quality, clean ingredients, vegan plant-based gel nails that you can do at home um, and I recently got from their website they've got a few different uh, like accessory packs so you can do chrome nails I think you can do little pearlescent nail designs so I'm going to have a little play with that you can also get these tools if you fancy trying your hand at nail art I'm normally pretty, I don't want to say boring, I'm going to say classic when it comes to the colours that I use. This is the pastel pink, that's probably the most similar to what I've got on my nails at the moment. I do find that these manicures last around 14 days at home, um, but then they come off super duper easily using the nail polish remover. It literally takes like five minutes to remove it, unlike a lot of gels which take a heck of a lot longer to remove and can be a lot more damaging to your nails. There's some really nice slightly deeper tones. I love this one which is called Chestnut. That's a really nice one particularly for pedicures. Um, this one is Shell Beige. That's another favourite of mine. So you need step one, step two and step three. Um, so step three is the top coat. That's the final bit. Step Step one is the base coat, so I need a one, a three, and, oh my gosh, that's so embarrassing, that's my brace, <laughs> and a two to do my full mani. You can also get normal nail polishes from Manicurist. This is a lovely strengthening base coat. This is the one that I use the most at Christmas. It is their gorgeous bronzy shade. I might, it's called Orm or Orme. I might pop some of that on my toes. What else do we have in here? There is a little correct pen that you can get. They literally have everything. Uh, cuticle balm, you can also use this on as like a hand cream. You can use it on your lips. Very, very practical. So yes, I'm a huge fan of using the products from Manicurist. They're... I think they have the best selection of nudes and pinks especially. So yeah, I'm going to have a little um, removal session. I will do one hand at a time so that I can multitask and finish off my work at the same time. I've just received some lovely edits back from Kat. So uh, let's see, we've got some nice photos here. Gorgeous. From that we took last week at Heckfield. That's nice, beautiful. And then I think she's also created a little reel as well. Yeah, that's so nice of the Easter wreath being made. Gorgeous, okay, I will look through all of this. Finish my emails while I take off my old nail varnish. This has been on for about three weeks now. And the sun's coming out, hallelujah. Oh, let's just go and quickly have a look at the garden. Anybody want to join me? No, mummy, I've been out all morning. Oh, I will, I will actually join you. Oh, we'll both join you, mummy, because we love sunshine. Today has been crazy. It's been pouring with rain, and it's been blue skies. Now it's dazzling. Oh, look at the tulips all coming out. Gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. What a lovely afternoon. Okay, I'm going to get cracking so that if it stays this glorious, I can come and spend some time out in the garden.
again, my darlings. So that was a time lapse of removing, oof, hair in my face, removing my old nail polish. My nails are now bare. So what I'm gonna do is start, of course, with my base coat level or number one. This is just a completely clear base coat. I filed my nails. I'm just gonna do a little bit of cuticle pushing back. The last time I had a manicure was in a salon, and to be honest, I do like to alternate. I'll maybe do one at home, one in a salon, one at home, one in a salon. And the salon, I just prefer how they tidy my nails, like keep the cuticles down. They do a far better job than I could, so it's nice to nice to alternate, but I do have these um, little orange sticks, which I get from Beauty Pie, which you can of course use cuticle oil and you can push your cuticles down, which I'll just spend a couple of moments doing. And then I think I'm gonna go with a uh, pale rose today. This is a really gorgeous color. It's quite sheer. Uh, so it's a really natural finish. It's lovely if you do want to apply some fun bits as well. So as I said, manicurists have now got these little um packs that you can get if you want to get that beautiful oh this one is completely chrome that one's like a mirror finish i think my other one is a little bit more pearly let's have a look yeah so this one here i'll leave all of these linked down below and i believe i've still got a 15 percent discount code too um this one is the typical like hayley bieber donut nails so i'll give that a try but first of all um i'm going to put my base coat on and I'm listening to Olivia Atwood on Weddings, Love Island and Returning to I'm a Celeb. It's the Jamie Lang um, private parts podcast and it's great entertainment to have on in the background. But also while I was taking off my nail varnish, I was doing my emails. I just had an email and the title is new, Dior Gardening. Dior Gardening. So yes, I have currently got, I'll probably pitch them on the screen here. I mean, the imagery for this shoot is absolutely gorgeous. I've got a pair of totally overpriced and ridiculous Dior wellies in my basket. Um, they also have a green book tote, which is really lovely and a gorgeous little raffia um, handbag that is gorgeous. I don't need any of it, but it's just sitting in my basket. Just sitting there. That's all it's doing. Anyway, I'm going to put this podcast back on. Um, so coat number one, I have got my, my lamp here at home. And by the way, this is LED, not UV. I, I had a few people send me these like scaremongering articles about how using um, UV lamps can give you skin cancer on your hands. This is not UV, this is LED. So there is nothing to fear, nothing to worry about. Um, and you can use it for a low, low heat mode for 99 seconds. I normally do uh, 60 seconds as like the first blast, but then because when you're doing it yourself, you can't be painting one hand while the other one is underneath. So I will pop both hands in at the same time so that each hand actually gets double cured. And that is my top tip for the nail manicure to last a little bit longer. So here we go, another time lapse. <laughs> Okay, my darlings, so unfortunately the light is starting to go at 6 p.m., but this is how it looks with two coats. Can you see? Can you see? Two coats of pale rose. Now, I actually love this as just an everyday, really gorgeous, natural nail. Um, and yeah, I would quite happily just leave it like that. I think that is so timeless, so elegant, a very nice bridal nail, if I do say so myself. It's just the perfect opacity. I love it. However, I'm feeling funky, so I am going to apply some chrome. Is this the correct one? Nope, that is not the correct one. And these little manicurist sets do come with the perfect spongy brush, which is here. So it's very easy to do. I love this trend. Uh, you literally just put it on the brush. Can you see, are we in focus? Who knows? And then you press it onto the nail, it's so easy. Press it onto the nail like so, and then smush it. You just kind of rub it. Can you see? On my little finger, 
So I've pressed it onto the nail and now I'm just rubbing it. And then you add your top coat and you're done. It's so easy. Oh, I just love it. And this is a really good one. I've tried a, I tried a chrome from Amazon before and it was just a little bit kind of dry, but this one is really glossy. Ooh, very nice. Love this. Oh my gosh, that is so gorgeous. That's actually prettier than any chrome um, that I've had done in a nail salon before. That is so beautiful. So this is on this hand here, it's the before and then the after. I'll show you it properly when I've done um, both hands. But so now we find number three, manicurist green flash numero two. And we paint on the top coat. This doesn't affect your chrome, but of course it sets everything in place. Bless you, Dexy. Oh, so glossy. Oh, do you know what? I would love if I had some little pearls right now. I would add some little pearls on here. Oh my gosh, it's beautiful. And then when I've painted the top coat, I do a double blast on here for the final one. Um, as always, just popping my second hand in there just so that, that gets an extra, an extra cure. And then I will add the chrome powder to my right hand. I would say that was about an hour and a half. I was taking it very slowly from start to finish. Yes, well, maybe an hour and 15 actually. And we have got the most perfect natural, I would call these pearlescent nails. I am so, and do you know what? I think this is my favorite at home manicure that I have ever done. So it was one coat of base coat, two coats of green flash pale rose LED nail polish, extra long wear edition. Um, yeah, two coats of that. Then a coat or a powdering of the, does this one have a name? Yes, it's literally called Glazed Effect Nail Powder. And then a coat of the top coat. I'm now just gonna run upstairs and get some nail oil just to finish this off. But I am so happy with that. You could go a little bit um, thicker and more I never know if the word opaque means clear or not. Like you could go less see-through with the coat underneath, but I think that just looks absolutely gorgeous. I'll show you this in proper daylight tomorrow, but it's starting to get a bit dark now. But yeah, I'm so, so happy with that. I think they look so beautiful, so elegant, and yet a nod to being on trend with that glazed effect. What do you guys think? Let me know down below. And I will leave everything that I've used, including the full, the full kind of set from Manicurist Green Flash link down below and my discount code. Dexy, that's such a funny noise. Um, yes, I'll leave that all linked down below because it's such a fantastic thing to be able to do at home. Okay, I know you want to go outside. I get the pen. I get the pen. Funny noises. My goodness me, they're mentalists. So I'm going to finish with some drops of their plant-based Ule Verde, which I think means green oil. Uh, beautiful lightweight nail oil as a finishing touch. I'll pop this on my cuticles and it's really lovely to actually just keep this on your bedside table and apply it every evening. It's very good for your nail health. So that's my finishing touch and we're done. It has become a chilly but lovely evening. It seems to be a bit of a tradition as soon as I finish doing a beautiful manicure that I head straight out into the garden. I'm not going to be doing any gardening this evening, you'll be pleased to know, but I am coming down here on a quest to pick up a few sticks of sticks or stems, stems of rhubarb. As I mentioned, I've got a few rhubarb recipes on my agenda this weekend. I will make the crumble, a rhubarb and apple crumble with you guys tomorrow. 
I'm potentially gonna do a rhubarb, cardamom and banana loaf as well. Might save that for Sunday or Monday though. But tonight, uh, while Charlie is cooking, I think he's gonna do a beef stir fry. I am going to make a nice and easy rhubarb compote, which we can then enjoy with our yogurts in the evening. Just a nice little homemade sweet treat. So this is our forced rhubarb, which grew in the forces over winter. So, unlike what I did last time when I cut it, you- ah, Dickens! Out of there! Get down, you mucky pup! Goodness me. Um, <laughs> yeah, you're meant to just twist it at the base so as not to disturb the roots too much. But first I need to remove these very heavy terracotta forces. Dreams work. So leave this off or? Uh, I think we probably can, yeah. yeah. So what I'll do is I'll just put it to one side like that. And there we have... <laughs> and there we have tonight's haul from the garden. I used to do clothes hauls and now I do kitchen garden hauls. Excuse me! Dexy, that's a bit ferocious. He's the scariest dog in the Cotswolds. No one is scared of you, my Chick fil A. Oh, my bonkers family. Okay, so as you will have just seen, I have chopped up 200 grams of rhubarb. Now, mine is potentially could have. Um, could be a little bit, what's the word, uh, ripe, but I think it'll be okay. So you can obviously do this on your stove in a pan, but I'm lazy and I like to use my Thermomix for everything. I am going to do five minutes. You can literally just do this on the hob at 100 degrees, so you're going to want to make sure um, it's boiling. And I'm going to do a slow temperature and I'm going to click that so that it goes into reverse mode as well as the rhubarb. So I've got 200 grams of rhubarb in there. I'm actually doing half this recipe. I'm going to add around 40 grams of caster sugar. Hopefully that's enough, should just about be. Um, and just a little splash of water so that we get a really nice silky smooth compote. Okay, so this has been whirring away nice and slowly for the last 10 minutes or so. I reduced it down to 80 degrees once it was boiling and it's currently looking like this. I added some slightly bigger bits of rhubarb in halfway so that we still have some chunks. Um, now I'm going to taste this and make sure it's not too bitter and if it is I'm going to add a little bit more sugar and um, do the same process again, 80 degrees for another 8 minutes or so. I think it might be a little bit bitter so let's give it a try. Okay, my darlings, this is the rhubarb compote. It has been in the fridge for the last 20 minutes, but it hasn't fully cooled down. However, Charlie and I have finished our dinner and we are now going to have some yogurt with rhubarb compote. I have tasted it and it is delicious. So I picked up this yogurt from Dalesford earlier. So Charlie is just having a rhubarb and yogurt. Ooh, look at this gorgeous pink colour. Sorry, the lighting is not very good. And I am going to have some nuts. Seeds, rather. And then the rest of it, I'm just going to pop in this jar here. And it'll keep in the fridge for probably a week or so. But I'm sure we will finish it before then. And there we go. Nice and easy homemade rhubarb compote. Good Friday, so no work today, although I will 
probably do a little bit of catching up later on. We have come straight to Bamford this morning. I slept with my heatless curls in, so I have got some <laughs> crazy waves. They probably won't last too long though. Um, Charlie and I are both here. We're gonna do a little workout in the gym, maybe go for a swim and cold dunk, but I think Charlie's gonna run me through a workout or two. It seems very, very quiet. There's no one here. This is the gorgeous changing area, which I can't obviously normally show you because there are people here. Um, it's really, really lovely. So in the lockers, you get a towel, a robe, flip-flops, little changing areas. I love these dark green towels. Might have to see if I can get a few of those at home. Um, and then there's this really lovely little area here where you can use the Bamford Oh, that's nice. Glow Mist, Plumping Cream, I used that yesterday. Deodorant and Body Milk. What's in here? Cotton Buds. And this morning I have got on my Lululemon Lilac Set. Nice cozy fleece top, um, but it's so warm I might just leave that in here. So, time to hit the gym and then we're gonna have a nice brunch before we get on with today's duties. Okay, we've had our lovely brunch and I've come to the garden centre, I've got my vegetables. Gonna pick up a few nice little things for the greenhouse. This is a Bellarina Snow, hmm, Primula. Looks rather lovely. And some beautiful pink Saxy Fragile. I remember this looked really gorgeous outside the kitchen window last year. I had some in white. Um, hmm, okay, I'm going to need a little basket because <laughs> I think I might be picking up more than I can carry. Let's just have a little look through here. Gorgeous light in the greenhouse this morning. I have not heard of these before, a verbena trailing lanai. That looks so beautiful and they're teeny tiny so I could put those in little terracotta pots in the greenhouse. Hello again my darlings, I am looking very glowing because I did not have any powder in my gym um, makeup bag. I'm having the loveliest morning. So as you, when did I last see you? In the changing room. Um, yeah, Charlie and I did a great workout together. We did some Tabata. I downloaded an app on my phone um, where you can do the timer. So it's like 40 seconds on, 20 seconds off. We did some floor weight exercises with kettlebells. Then we did some rowing. No, we didn't do rowing. There was a lady on the rowing machines. We wanted to do rowing, but instead we did some jogging on the Woodway Curve, which is killer. You go as hard as you can for 40 seconds and then walk for 20, 40, 20, 40, 20, and repeated that circuit. Um, switching up the weight exercises three times so yes it was a very good workout to start the day pretty quiet in the gym which was nice um had a nice shower didn't wash my hair and then just um had a quick breakfast in the nest which is this area just as you go into the club um and it is members only but members can bring guests into the nest so you can have coffee tea tea is free um you can have a nice breakfast so yeah that was great then went into the farm shop got my veg for the week in here and then as you saw I went into the garden centre and I have now got a boot full of flowers which I'm so excited to plant up this afternoon. Um, I think I'm gonna basically have a greenhouse full of potted plants which I'm very excited for. So now we are, we, Charlie and I travelled in different cars because he had to go to Straw Top and I have come straight to Morton in Marsh which is where George and Petra's new house is and we are doing a little bit of a bedroom makeover for them. I'm not going to show what we're doing in this vlog because I don't want Petra to see it before it's done so I will give you a before and after maybe in like a week or so once they've moved in. Um, but yeah, we're doing a little bit of a makeover for them. Charlie's gone to get the bed frame from store top. We're gonna do a little bit of gardening. Um, I think the wisteria needs pruning. The veg beds just need, a little, well, the raised beds need a little bit of a tidy over. So that is the plan for the next hour or so. We're not gonna spend too long here. Andrew is here doing a bit of painting. We're painting their front door a nice Cotswold green. And um, I'm meeting Charlie there in 20 minutes. I have this weird thing where I really like to go in to um, local co-ops. <laughs> I know I'm really weird. 
To be honest, Charlie and I don't really go into supermarkets that much anymore. We get like the odd bits and bobs delivered via Ocado and then the fruit and veg we just either grow it or get it from Dalesford so it's not often that I get to go into a supermarket so I find it really exciting which is the dorkiest thing in the entire world um but the co-op in Morton is a market I think it's called a market store which is basically like a slightly bougie like local produce yeah and I just really like them so I'm gonna go in see what George and Petra's new local co-op is like um and I'll bring you along because in case anyone else is as dorky as I am, oops, and loves local supermarkets. So we've got some nice local garlic and asparagus, Cotswold gold oil, mmm, Cotswold gold hollandaise, hollandaise sauce, nice. Well, slightly underwhelming trip <laughs> to co-op. I just picked up a, um, a seeded loaf of bread and some of those little cook meals, which I thought would be really nice just to have in the freezer for as and when I can't be bothered to cook alongside my all plants, because sometimes you just want a little bit of chicken. So um, made it to George and Petra's now. Charlie is going to be arriving imminently. Then we're going to go in and um, do some sorting out, but I'm not going to bring you guys with me. I'm going to save that for when I properly show you the makeover. So next stop, I will see you back at home and we're going to do a little bit of gardening, of course. Well, this is absolutely gorgeous. I have just got home. I made a nice um, quick lunch. I had one of the cook meals and now I've made myself a nice coffee. And as you might be able to see, I've just got all of the plants that I bought from Dalesford this morning out here on the table. I actually just filmed a TikTok slash short of um, a little garden centre haul. So check out my latest short if you want to see exactly what I got. So I'm going to get cracking now um, with planting some bits up. I think I'm going to start with the lupins. So I got three of these beautiful, they're called Lupin Gallery White and they're, they are this beautiful white lupin. They are possibly, aside from the alliums and the anemone, they are my favourite part of a herbaceous border. They are so striking and if you are um, good with your timings of cutting them back, you will actually get two sets of blooms. I'll pop a picture of fully, well, you can see, this is what they look like. You know what they like. You... <laughs> Such good guard dogs. <laughs> so, because I've got three of these, I'm going to spread them out throughout the border. Was it yesterday or the day before, the vlog before, where I said I didn't feel that all of my lupins had survived the winter? So, I'm basically just going to place these down. Um, evenly distributed, because the ones that are growing already, I think, are purple. Yeah. And there are definitely some gaps, so I'm going to sort these out and get planting. the camera screen at all so hopefully you can see me I've just popped the lupins in the herbaceous border and I filmed a little another little video I think I might do a series on shorts which will be gardening tips for beginners um, hopefully I can save them in a playlist and then you can access them if and when you want to so that one was three tips on planting plants up in your herbaceous border just like really simple tips that maybe I learned from talking to Nicholson's team or watching YouTube videos or from gardening with my mum when I was little. Just things that to me I just kind of know what to do but if you've never gardened before you would never know to do those things. Oh. Anyway next I'm going to plant up these delphiniums in the herbaceous border outside my greenhouse. I'm not sure if you'll be able to hear it but I'm pretty sure there is a wedding in the church right now. Um, how lucky are they? <laughs> it's such a gorgeous day Ooh, because I can hear some beautiful singing and organ playing. How magical. Right, delphiniums. These get tall. So, might pop this one back here next to the allium. Lovely. This is certainly one way to put my manicurist 
at-home manicure to the test. <laughs> My next job is to start on the potting. So I think I'm going to begin with the geraniums. They're in these teeny tiny little tubs at the moment, but I will plant them in something a little bit bigger so that they've got room to grow. I'm going to plant up all of these things in terracotta pots. I'm going to take out some of these muscari, which are just about finishing. That's a good size pot for the geranium. And I will plant the muscari bulbs somewhere, maybe in the woodland area over there, so that we get to enjoy them next year. Um, and I'm going to use my Rocket Grow seed and cutting compost alongside some leftover compost. I'm just going to mix that all together and then give everything a nice water. And most of these, to be honest, should be okay to be left outside. So we can create a nice little cluster out here on the tables um, and in my little mini greenhouse. Tra has just got back home and made an epic oh, yes. discovery. What have you got there? Freshly homemade jam donuts. Oh! From sounds a bit dodgy, but from a lay guy, not really. Uh -huh. Just outside of so where George and Petra live, or soon to live. Yeah. Really excitingly, if you come out of there and go the opposite way to where we normally come home, mm. it's, it's an it, it's a similar ETA as the mm. map says. Mm. Um, there's literally this look farmer's wife, and she's got a stand. I'll show you a picture. Farmer's a wife. Stand like this. Which has fresh That's flowers, adorable. fresh flowers, eggs, homemade donuts on a Sunday. Today's mm -hmm. Friday. I don't know, maybe because it's bank holiday. So literally homemade jam donuts this morning. She finished them. That's the most adorable and on thing top ever. Of that, she does potato prints. Potato prints. Oh wow! You cut potato. Yeah. I've never heard of this. Yeah, I have. Yeah. And, That's um, awesome. That's so cute. So what I was thinking is, I don't know whether I don't think the, these two go together. Obviously the same. Yeah. But I thought two of these could mm -hmm. go with, if we get them framed. Yeah. And next to George and Petra's bed yeah. in, the, in the bedroom um, revamp Lovely. that we're doing because then they're local. And Cute. I that's quite sweet. And that's they kind of work with adorable. the room. Adorable. What's think her maybe Instagram? Keep this one, do you think? Yeah, I love that. What's her Instagram? Um, so I chatted her briefly. Was she there just like yeah, manning yeah, the here, store? Look. Oh my gosh. <gasps> Is that pistachio? No, it's a mini egg. It's a chocolate <gasps> donut. I didn't think you'd want the chocolate one. Oh my gosh. I how thought fun. strawberry jam was the best one. This is the most Her wholesome Instagram. thing ever. Is. This is why the Cotswolds is the best place in the whole world. Because where else would you find just like wholesome little farmer's wife baking stalls <laughs> on the side of the Kate road? Latimer. And Kate so actually, Latimer. so Jack, who helps in our garden um, and who is just amazing. Kate Source Latimer knowledge. Country. This is, look, 17 and a half thousand followers. Kate Latimer underscore country. So she, oh, she's cute. She's young. Yeah, she's got a little stall look. Aww. So we'll give her a follow. And then, um, yeah, while we use this opportunity. Cotswold, what's Fit Jack's Instagram? Cotswold Country Bird. Cotswold Country Bird, just show it. Because <laughs> we love Cheeky plug. We love. Here we go. And oh, this is and Jack donuts. made jam donuts this morning as well, or yesterday, funny enough. But uh, this is Jack who helps in our garden. Oh, what flavour cake did she do? She made. Mmm. Vanilla sponge with fresh pipe cream. Anyway, so yeah. Right, let's now I'm have. Go I'm going to have a coffee in that. And yeah. We're both going to. Get I've already in been the in the garden. garden, mate. I've been busy bee. Thank you for your help, Dexy. I could not have done any of this gardening work without you. You are hopeless. No, that's my Daddy, brother. Daddy, I'm, I'm not. I'm not hopeless. I'm my brother is over saying hello to his friends, who Do actually don't really. Daddy, we've just had treats. But I've, I've heard the word now. I said it now. I'd like. I'd, I'd like. I'd like to have some more. Dicky, Dicky, treats from your daddy. Treats, Lynn. Dicky Dicky! Treats! potted plants are now potted on in their terracotta pots. We've got the clematis, the geraniums, the verbenas and everything else that I picked up from Dalswood this morning. All of these will flower white 
and hopefully they might still be in flower by the time of our wedding. I think it'd be so lovely to have lots of terracotta pots all over the tables, whether that's near the wedding cake or where we're actually eating or outside tables. Um, and I'd like to have as much flower <laughs> as possible all over the place for our wedding, um, but it seems a lot more sustainable if it can be flowers which I can grow and then have in the house for year after year after year. So I think I might make this my mission every couple of weeks to just do a load of terracotta pot planting and it should give a really lovely effect for our wedding and maybe save us a little bit of money when it comes to our flower bill. So over here down by the pond I have just taken all of the muscari out of the pots. It's all going a little bit over now as you can see. Um, so I've taken it out of their little terracotta pots and planted it here in this area by the pond. We haven't ever really done anything with this area but I think it'd be really nice if these bulbs, muscari bulbs, do come back year after year just to have a little bit of spring interest. Now I have bought this little tub here with a few kind of miscellaneous seeds, things which don't mind um, not being too well cared for. And I'm just gonna plant quite a few of these seeds. I'm just literally going to use the dibber, make some holes and shove them in, hope for the best, because it'd be really lovely if we can get some blooms in this area, but it is a little bit dappled, so not too sure what will happen. But with seeds, it's not really, you're not really losing anything by giving it, giving it a go. What do you think, Dexy? Mummy, I approve of your idea. I think it's optimistic, but I approve. Thank you, Dexy. music playing out of the Alexa. The sun is shining and I've just had a little tidy up. I've done my planting, I've watered the seeds in over there by the pond, uh, done all of my potting and the bits which I've potted. Looks like Charlie's doing a little bit of uh, container arrangement here. The bits which I potted up earlier are now on the little stand in there. So hopefully they grow up nice and big and strong, ready for the wedding. And then I just pulled up some of the overgrowing raspberry down here in the kitchen garden and put it into pots to give to friends, which are now up there on the windowsill in the greenhouse. I potted up my ranunculus and I've given everything a really good watering in here. Gosh, it is toasty in here so warm in fact can you see these candles have started to bend over my goodness I cannot believe what a gorgeous evening it is I think we might even bring our pasta down to the bottom of the kitchen garden for the first time this year oh it's still so warm it's nearly 7 p.m. and I'm still in a t-shirt how absolutely glorious Okay, my darlings, it is 7 p.m. and I am officially pooped. <laughs> I have done a lot of gardening this afternoon. I've just come in and brushed my hair and blended out my makeup. It had gone very, very patchy indeed. And um, we are about to start making some pasta for dinner. I've just run up to the garden bedroom. <laughs> That's what we're calling this now. Um, because I did promise that I would show you this room in proper daylight. The last two times I've shown you this room, it has been a little bit dark. So I'm gonna flip you around and you can see the true color. I would say, do you know what? It still actually looks a little bit mintier on the camera than it is in real life. I would say it's a little bit more pea-like <laughs> in real life, um, but it does look fabulous. I have to take my hat off to Charlie. It does look really lovely, especially with the antique furniture in here. Um, 
Another little change that actually happened while I was in Oman is we had the legs on the dressing table chopped down, about four inches taken off, so that now it's actually a decent height. I think, to be honest, let's see, still quite low. The mirror is partially dirty, partially just very old. We've got a nice little neon candle in the corner, photo from mine and Charlie's engagement over there. Um, we've got a few new bits up on the walls, this lovely old map of Warwickshire. The pictures which we picked up from Dalesford a couple of weeks ago, remember the jam jar edit? We were going to paint the frames, but um, they're up on the wall already and they do look quite nice. And lots of you guys actually suggested that maybe we consider painting the bed frame, which is a really good idea. So if anyone can recommend any particular paint, then let me know. But the light in this room at this time of day is my favourite especially at this time of year when the sun is fairly low, it just streams in through this window. It does look a bit harsh on camera, um, but it really is absolutely gorgeous. So there we go, the garden bedroom in proper daylight. Look at that gorgeous sunshine. Feels like an early summer evening. It is still so warm. I'm just coming down to collect some rhubarb, my final task for the day. I'm going to make a rhubarb and apple crumble for our lunch tomorrow. We're heading to Charlie's mum and dad's for an Easter lunch and I'm on crumble duty. Let's see how many ripe stems I can find. Okay, I've just got all the ingredients out, ready to start the crumble. I might substitute in a few apples as well as the rhubarb. So plain flour, sugar, almonds, um, I'll need a little bit of sea salt as well. And I'm going to start by chopping the ends off the rhubarb. Charlie's opening up one of the lovely apple juices. Which flavour is that? Cox and Bramley, 100% ah, farm pressed juice. Double apple from, is it Chegworth or Chegwell? Chegworth, Chegworth, yeah, that was such a lovely delivery. Oh wow. Isn't it amazing? That is good. Perfect for our evening tipple, non-alcoholic. Um, and we are you just doing... That with gin like that. Yeah, you could definitely gin. put gin with it. That'd be, That'd be really nice. And how nice are these light evening? It's, it's seven o'clock. And of course, butter for the um, crumble. It needs to be a little bit soft, so I've just popped on the agar. And then we are doing a delicious nonna tonda pasta. Nonna tonda. For our dinner. Me chiamo Fabrizio. the crumble because we are both rather exhausted but had a lovely bowl of pasta as the sun went down in the garden. I will make the crumble tomorrow but I think I'm going to end this vlog here because with all the gardening and everything else it's probably been quite a long one. So my darlings I hope you enjoyed this vlog. Lots of wholesome content. It has been a lovely day. I'm going to have a nice bath now so good night. Don't forget to give the video a thumbs up. Don't forget to give it a like for Dexter and for Dickens. <laughs> exactly. And we'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.